There's nowhere for me to go. The cold and ruthless wind flocks at my face. Gray colored gathering clouds scare my legs way too much as they could move on to another place. In my hands I'm holding a tiny silver coin. It's the last thing that's left of you. Customary, I press it more severely than my flesh can actually bear. The rim cuts into the skin and always leaves marks. By now, there's a faint line on my hand, set up right beside the lifeline that has been partly interrupted since I was a tot. But right now that I feel there's nothing more to be lost, I'm gently carrying it, looking at it longer than a moment for the first time. Strange thing it is, I'm wondering, why there's no rust on it. During all these years, my hair has turned to white. I fasten it to wrinkle up, and I cannot run but slowly walk anymore. This coin ever stayed the same. The proud profile of an old lady. I never struggled to find out who she might be. The fine carving along the rim and the rear that shows a number that I haven't been really interested in either. I'm not into collecting money or stamps like other folks. I don't like the narrow-mindedness that usually comes along with preserving things, the incapability to let go. I never managed to let go. I never managed to hold on to things and people. When you asked me if I was okay, I said yes and meant no. When you released me, I wanted to stay but went away though. When there was time, I was always in a hurry. When there was something going on, I'd lurk in a corner, watching everything happen but would never be part of it. My soul has always pushed me in the wrong direction. However, I was always conscious about it. I'd always know what was going on and still I was too weak to change the strange behavior. I just couldn't stop to hold myself out towards life and all his deadly weapons. Rain sets in. Water drips down my shoulders, over my breast, and gathers at my bosom. My skin, once bronzed and shimmery, has turned paler every year. There's no use in hiding. You wouldn't notice it anyway. Give me a moment, honey. I need to put on some lipstick yet. <laughs> you don't need any, you know that he said, smiling his calming smile. It just covers the taste of your mouth. Don't be silly and go fetch me my handbag, please. I said it, trying to be strict, but it failed as I turned myself and saw him still grinning at me, as if I was a stubborn little child. Actually, this was exactly what I was. My shoulders looked tenuous in a pitch-dark dress I chose to wear that night. It should make me appear more mature, but in fact, it only reflected my innate wish to get grown. To my mind, being in grown-up included several things that were worth to achieve. Self-assurance, responsibility, and the ability to cope with anything. Three major points I couldn't assert to be familiar with. I ran into his arms, and the warmth of his embrace made my shroud of maturity melt quickly. Soon I turned real again, the person that I was. Sometimes it occurred to me that this was only possible due to his skin. It was like fire that brings water to boil, only I didn't see myself as the water, because water changes all the time, and by this time I believed, along with its apparent air, its inner nature would be modified too. We're late, honey. I guess we'd better go now. I delivered myself from the body that I loved and walked towards the door. After we had locked it, we started to make our way to town and although I had been looking forward to this evening for days, in this moment I wished both of us back into the flat at once. Streetlights colored the pavement and orange stripes that every now and then turned slowly into dark panels at places where there was hardly any light. 
I felt ingenious and started to dance, or at least I tried to. Convinced to be able to conquer the world, I took his hand and dragged him impatiently behind. Come on, dance me till the end of town, no, no, to the end of the world. I called out with pleasure. He abruptly stopped walking and bowed down before me, pretending to plead. So then, mademoiselle, may I have to dance? People must have looked at us strangely, but I didn't take any notice of them. The way we were waving each other round was the soothing way our bodies corresponded to each other. Round and round it went, no beginning and no end. Somehow we got in front of a snugly looking bar. Subdued noises of laughter and clinking bottles filled our ears when we opened up the door and walked inside. Dark and warm colors supported a familiar atmosphere. I almost felt like home. We'll have two gin, boy, your finest, please. I looked at him, terrified, but the next second I passed over to smile again. The evening changed its face from hour to hour. Sometimes we would sit and sip everything that we would be able to order. Sometimes we would trill round the dance floor, and in both the twisting state of mind that my head had to struggle with and the movements we made while dancing just induced one single thing. It all made me feel like everything was all right. I felt like I was part of the great circle of life. No need of anything else except the moment. No need of anything else. Life in its fullness was right there, in our shuffling feet, in our sparkling eyes, in our beating hearts. Although I wanted to look more mature, my physical tenure stature explained quite well that I was com completely worn out at some point. I was way too drunken as that I could remember the time we started our way back home. What I remember is the faint, almost pastel dawn that covered the sky with yellow and white. Look over there, light. I so much loving it, you know, so much. I know you do. Shall I hold you? Do you feel still able to walk? <sighs> loving so much. Needed so much one you 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 know I want you I want to sleep. I think from that moment on he carried me, for I still smell his hair, drenched in the odors one can perceive at a bar. He must have put me to sleep, but I can't have passed but I can't have passed a lot of time. For when I awakened the dawn still held back the sun from shining widely over town. I glanced besides me. He was sleeping calmly. I was certain he was happy. Happy with everything. And I was too. I slipped noiselessly out of the bed and strolled to the window. For several minutes I stood there, motionless, captured by a beauty that I had felt once or twice before someone. As the dawn slowly began to fade, in complete calm I got dressed and gathered a few things together that I would have needed. Then I opened the door. Before I went into the streets and out of town, I took a glance at, at on the one I truly was loving. I shut the door gently and I...